My strategic plan, Strategy Huddle, with visiting strategy leader Morton Glassman. Yeah. So um, with that, I'd like to pass it over to, to Mort, who's going to dig deeper into this, the discussion around accountability. And I'm just really excited uh, to hear what Mort has to share. So Mort, take it away. Thanks, Erica. I, re I really appreciate it. Um, I especially appreciate the opportunity to talk about um, what my company has done with our client um, to talk about accountability in terms of uh, how it's worked in one organization uh, and to share that with your uh, with your other participants. Um, I have an apology to make up front. Um, you know, you all probably have read articles where it says, you know, an unattributed source, you know, spoken on the condition of anonymity. Uh, well, I can tell you who I am and who I work for, but I really can't tell you who my client is. Um, one thing that I will say, um, I want to correct something that Ryan said, is that um, the I, I don't work at the department level of the federal government. Um, actually, the organization that I support is a fairly large organization, um, about 30,000 people working in it. Um, that's within a larger government agency. Um, and that is part of um, a department level, cabinet level agency. So um, maybe someday we can talk about the, the, what should I say, the traceability of strategic plans through multiple levels of an organization. But I'm going to be talking at, um, uh, uh, what should I say, a third level down organization that's big enough and important enough to have developed its own strategic plan. So um, let's see, I hope I have control here. Yes, I do. Okay. So um, in order for you to understand how accountability has been driven through the organization that I support, um, I think the first thing we really need to deal with is um, the management structure of this organization. Um, as I mentioned, it's a large government organization, and um, we have an assistant commissioner. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the military, you can think of this person as a four-star general. Um, for those of you who are familiar with government um, levels he's a he's a member of the senior executive service um, he is not a political appointee but he does need to be approved by congress so he's pretty visible out there um, underneath him is a single deputy assistant commissioner um, he's the equivalent of a three-star general he is also um, i'll abbreviate and say ses senior executive service member um, Together, they really run the organization. Um, it's almost like a CEO, um, COO kind of setup where the assistant commissioner is kind of the visionary and outward facing. And to my perspective, the deputy assistant commissioner is kind of the operational person. Um, underneath them, there are six executive directors. Um, they're kind of like two-star generals. They're also senior executive service members. Um, four of these executive directors in our organization um, are operational, outward-facing. Um, they deal with the public uh, or manage programs that deal with the public. Um, two of the executive directors are inwardly focused. They manage people, equipment, facilities, systems, information, um, infrastructure. Um, so they're really, they're really focused at providing the foundation on, on which we provide the, the services we provide. Underneath them... <laughs> <laughs> is the level of director. Um, they're kind of the one stars. Um, for those of you, again, familiar with the government grading system, they're GS-15s. Um, they manage multiple programs um, that support the organization's mission. And, and I'll relate all of this to mission in a minute, but I just wanted to get you the organizational structure. And finally, there are program managers, um, the equivalent of colonels. Uh, they're typically GS-14s, and they are responsible for individual program areas um, focused on a, a particular group or a particular outcome. So that's our management structure. On the other side, we have a strategic structure. And um, I just wanted to make sure that this was kind of clear to your audience, because I know people have different um, terms for different things. So um, for us, it all starts with a mission. Uh, and the mission is why the organization that I support exists. Um, we're here to accomplish a specific purpose, and again, I wish I could be more um, detailed and give you the, the mission and the vision, et cetera, but I can't. Anyway, um, the vision is a, a picture of where we want the organization to be in the future. Uh, when we did, did our strategic plan, the time frame we asked people to look at was five to six years out, um, but some of the things that we have to do um, 
really require more than five, six, five to six years to accomplish. So there are some aspects of the vision that look further out than five to six years. Um, underneath that are our high level goals. Um, in our organization, there are six of them. Uh, we specifically wanted to keep it to um, no more than that. And fortunately, we came up with that number. Uh, for us, they tend to be very long-term in nature, and, and in fact, they may never be fully achieved. They're, they're something we're always aspiring to. Um, within that are objectives, um, and for us, objectives, we use the acronym SMART, which I assume most of your audience has heard before. Um, they're very specific. Um, they can be measured. Kent, we'll get there in a second. Um, they need to be attainable. They need to be realistic, um, and they also need to be time-based. So those are those are the kind of the critical high-level uh, views of, of what our strategy looks like. In order to accomplish our objectives, our goals, achieve our vision, accomplish our mission, um, there are some supporting actions and strategies um, that have been identified. Um, and, and these are all strategic in nature, which is why we're calling them supporting actions and strategies. They're not operational. They're not what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, they're the things that we need to do um, to change the organization. So um, supporting that, and this is where we're going to be able to link to accountability, at the mission, vision, goal, and objective level, we have performance measures. Um, and the performance measures say, um, how do, well, are we accomplishing what we're trying to accomplish um, from a, an outward focus? Uh, some of them are inward focus as well. Or how well are we doing that? Um, and then since the supporting actions and strategies have specific things that need to be done by certain dates, we've established milestones. So that far right column really is, is how things link together. So we have our management structure. We have our strategic structure. How, how do those two um, relate to each other? Well, unlike some organizations, our mission comes from above. We're above for us as Congress. Um, so we can't necessarily get into a new business. Um, we're pretty much told by Congress, um, these are your areas of responsibility. However, in terms of the vision and the goals, that those are coming directly from the assistant commissioner and the deputy assistant commissioner, and to a certain extent, our executive directors. Uh, but I didn't put them on there because I want to be able to make a point to you in a little bit. Um, our objectives are specifically tied to executive owners. And for us, executive owners are the um, executive directors. Each objective has one and only one executive owner. However, an executive owner can have multiple objectives. And finally, at the bottom level, if you will, of the accountability or strategic uh, pyramid are the supporting actions and, and strategies. And those are assigned to action officers. And the action officers are ideally directors, but sometimes they're at the program manager level. So if I put back uh, what we had before, we have our performance measures for our vision, uh, sorry, mission, vision, goals, and objectives. And for we have milestones for our supporting actions and strategies. And if I take the link out between the two, you can now see how we start to map accountability. Um, our assistant commissioner, our deputy assistant commissioner, and our executive directors all have performance measures that come directly from the strategic plan against which they're evaluated. That's not all they're evaluated on, because again, there are operational measures that they need to achieve. But performance measures from the strategic plan do become part of, their, of our performance uh, management system. And similarly, the milestones um, are um, assigned to directors or program managers based on the action plans. And again, not all of their performance measures are strategic in nature, but the milestones from the action plans are. So um, that kind of sets up the framework for um, accountability. The one thing I do want to say is that, that milestones are performance measures, um, but th they're saying, are you doing what you're trying to do? And then the performance measures are saying, are you accomplishing what you're trying to accomplish from, a, from an outward focus? So hopefully that's all clear in terms of relating strategic performance measures and milestones to people. Um, I'd also say that, that from a strategic level, we really don't go below the level of program managers. Um, not quite a true statement. We do have field people who have similar performance measures um, because we are a field organization. Um, I'm dealing primarily here uh, on these slides with people who are um, headquarters based. So 
Everybody knows what their strategic performance measures are and their strategic milestones are as appropriate, which leads to the second part of accountability. So what we have on, on, in terms of reporting against milestones is the action officers, the either program managers or um, directors, report progress against their milestones on um, a monthly basis. We actually capture that information in the SharePoint portal. Um, the group that I work for monitors uh, achievement on that portal so that, as you'll see in a minute, if there are any problems cropping up, um, we can make the executive um, committee aware of what's going on. Um, but also, the um, all senior managers have access to that portal, so if they want to see how we're doing against certain milestones, they can do that. But the second component um, is a formal quarterly meeting with the executive committee. Um, and our executive committee, if you look back at the previous slide, is our assistant commissioner, deputy assistant commissioner, and our executive directors. And in that meeting, the officers report on their supporting actions and strategies. But um, we've got about 60 of those supporting actions and strategies. They're not all briefed every quarter. Uh, what we're really looking for are those um, supporting actions and strategies that are late, over budget, under resourced. Um, there are issues with accomplishing it. Maybe we have to rely on an outside agency and it's not happening. Um, and, and the intent of this is, is not a gotcha, not, you know, you're over budget or you're late or, you know, what's the problem? The, the intent of these um, meetings with the executive committee is to figure out how we can um, make this happen, make that action happen. Um, and that may result in more budget being added, more people being added. Uh, it may result in um, a change in time frame. Um, we may also scrap an activity completely. That's a, that's a possibility. Um, the second part is there are always those hot issues that, that senior management is, is interested in, uh, major programs that have a lot of public visibility and they'll get reported on a quarterly basis um, just, just because it's of everyone's interest. So that's, those are our milestone checks. Um, so there is accountability. People are, are reporting uh, on a monthly or quarterly basis um, as needed. Um, the other component of accountability is, is are we getting, are we accomplishing what we're trying to accomplish by putting in these strat strategic actions and plans? And so the directors and above are evaluated on the, their performance measures, and there is a very formal performance measurement process, um, employee evaluation process in the government. They're measured semi-annually. There's actually a kind of an interim review that says, hey, it looks like you're doing well, or you're not doing well based on, on the high level goals and objectives or um, yeah, it would be just goals or objectives that they're assigned to. And then the department um, produces an annual performance report um, and as a component of the department, some of our results show up in the annual performance report. Um, so the accountability is there. I mean, it, the, the accountability is at the department level, but you know, I think it's pretty obvious that if we're not meeting our numbers, we, we hear about it. Um, there are also interim quarterly reports that are produced at the um, agency and departmental level for them to check our progress as we go. So um, the accountability is there. Um, uh, Erica talked a little bit about reward structures in, in the federal government. There's, there are spot bonuses. Um, there are the ability to get step increases within grades, um, and all of that can be controlled by um, performance uh, evaluation. So um, that's kind of what I wanted to say in terms of how a 181, what should I say, organization within an agency within the federal government department has approached performance accountability. I, I hope that was helpful to you. Um, I don't know if it's Erica or Ryan, but yeah. back to you. No, that was great. I, um, I certainly enjoyed that. I really, really appreciate you sharing that uh, level of detail, especially because I know it's really hard a lot of times in our in the the work that we all do, we can't can't share you know, what the organization we're working for or the specificity around it. But I think you did an awesome job just really walking us through how it's working in this agency. I'm just curious, um, could you share just from a from a wrap up perspective, like is there anything that you from 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 this structure that you think was is the best thing that you did and 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 you would uh, absolutely recommend replicating uh, across other orgs or also, maybe something that you wish you would have done differently, um, but of course the process is going. So I'd just love to hear kind of, you know, great stuff or maybe things that could have gone maybe different. Well, the, the, the great stuff, and, and I, I think 
Um, fortunately, you don't know who I'm talking about. So um, what I can say is we, we uh, our, our senior leadership um, is very much um, in favor of strategic planning. Um, um, we've been the kind of agency where we've been very reactive, um, and they understand that, um, and, and I've said this before in some of your other st strategy huddles, that you know, I, what we think strategic planning is about is not is trying to do prevention so you don't have to fight the fires down the road. Um, so they understand if they can set their own direction, um, they can avoid fighting the fires of you know, being called on the carpet by Congress. So they're really behind the strategic planning effort. And so that, that's one takeaway I'd say is, you know, make sure your strategic, your, your senior management is, is, is behind you. And what happened because of that is uh, they, they wanted to make sure that this wasn't just a paper exercise. Um, and, and it was, they kind of came to us and said, well, how do we make sure that this isn't a paper exercise? How do we make this um, part of the reality of uh, management within the agency. And, and that's two ways. One, what we just talked about um, in terms of embedding performance measures into the um, regular uh, employee evaluation process. But the other thing is um, we've also linked the strategic plan directly into the budget budgeting process, which is, if you've ever worked for the federal government, is a, is a morass. But, but now people can see how the strategic plan will lead to getting the money. Um, for their programs uh, and for what they want to do. So I, I think this agency has, has done a lot of good things um, in, in terms of uh, a lesson learned for us. Uh, for a long time, we mandated monthly reporting, that, that quarterly report to the executive committee. Uh, at one point, used to be a monthly report that everybody needed to do. Um, and if you want to talk about people getting bored and who cares, that was the way to do it. And I think by changing it to, you know, who needs help and what does senior management need to know about and just focusing on those two things, um, we've got a lot of buy-in and, and people aren't just going to meetings for the purpose of attending meetings. They're going there to, to make things better. So I hope that answers your question. No, that was great. No, that's, I think that was perfect. Absolutely. Um, I, I just really want to say thanks for contributing and, and sharing um, today because I know it takes time uh, to build out these case studies. So I really, really appreciate